Hi guys, so welcome back to the new episode of Building Blocks. So I'm Afif, your host, and with me today I have Rafiq to talk about funding. Rafiq, can right. you give us a short introduction and why the audience should know that you are the people to listen to? Hi, I'm Rafiq. I'm the senior executive of Grant Department under evaluation, to be specific. So what I do is basically I evaluate and I analyze all the startup proposal for CIP. Spark and Sprint grant in Cradle. Okay, that's great. So before we touch into the specific questions, right? Can mm -hmm. you tell us a little bit? So maybe the audiences at home are not well aware. What is the difference between, let's say, grant or funding? So can you give us like a general definition of what those are and what makes it different from one another? All right. So just to give you like a compress of what's funding in Malaysia, what's out there available. It's basically, we have a few types of funding. The first one is what everybody knows, which is the venture capital. So venture capital is basically a firm where they injected some fund for you to, it depends on what's the purpose and what you try to fundraise for in return of a few percentage of your shareholding. Lah. What they expect is basically they're looking to increase or push your trajectory upwards so that you can exit quickly as soon as possible. So another thing that we have in Malaysia is ECF where it's just like a Kickstarter GoFundMe where you put up a page to showcase what you try to propose, right? And people put in the money. So these kind of people, they are included uh, someone like a firm, it can be an uh, angel investor and also a retail investor. So at the end of this, it's basically you're able to raise funds while opening up opportunities for everyone else to participate in your startup. As in like in, from the shareholder point of view lah. And the next one that we have is basically government grants and that would be us lah, Cradle Fund where we have CIP Spark and CIP Sprint. So basically, Spark, CIP Spark is one of the product that we have. Spark, as you know, you need a little ignition. For example, in engine, right? You cannot start to generate energy without, without energy. the spark. Yes. Hence why so, it's called CIP Spark. Uh, right. Exactly. Okay. So that's how we correlate between CIP Spark and development. And so, that's the actual purpose of it. Lah. Basically, if you already have an idea, you already have something to work on, and you need just a little bit of inject, of okay. fun for you to make sure that everything to complete as a, to come up with the MVP. So CIP Sprint, just imagine yourself, you are in motion. Uh, maybe you Sprinting. running, jogging, right? Okay. So you already have the moment, momentum going. So when you sprint, you just boop, from 20 miles per hour to, I don't know, 180, hopefully. So that's the idea of CIP Sprint where we accelerate your growth. This is the part then we can see the differences later where we try to help you to achieve growth as fast as possible. Okay, I'm going to give you a situation. Mm -hmm. Let's say I am a startup founder, right? Mm -hmm. I need this spark to go to ensure that I get the product market fit. Can you talk to me about what the process that I should go to? Basically, it's very simple. What you need to have is you need to identify what's your problem statement. So once you have the problem statement, then you have to figure out what's your solution. What would be, how are you going to address all the pain points that you have? You have to have some sort of like a basic foundation of ideas, how you're going to address and everything. So once you already have those, what you need to do is you go to our website, Cradle Fund, and you go to the grants column there then you can apply through that. Oh, you can just apply yeah. for grants straight from the website? Yes. You don't need to drive to uh, anywhere, any minister, whatever? To be, to, be, to be very precise, we don't accept like, okay, okay uh, you send me an email and then you ask like, okay, can I apply for the CIP Spark? No. no At the end of the day, not even walk-ins? No. What right. you need to do is as simple as go to the website and you apply through there. But before you apply, First thing first, you need to understand uh, where do you belong to. Lah. For early stage startup founders, if they have already have a product and looking for enhancement or maybe they just starting up, right? Then CIP Spark might be good for you. Right. But if you already have a certain uh, steady revenue mm -hmm. and you're looking for, uh, I just want to have more campaigns, you want mm -hmm. to generate more revenue than you have. You, it might be like the CIP Sprint is perfect for you. Okay, so right. let's say I'm still in the early stage of my startup journey, right? Mm -hmm. Let's say I, I don't want the CIP Spark, 
I just skip to the CIP spring. That will can be I do that? Can I do that? You can do that. You don't. Yeah. We don't restrict you from doing that. But at the end of the day, the fundamental is that we're looking for a company that already have a steady revenue stream. Oh, like right. they already have steady numbers in terms of revenue. Okay. So the pre revenue is very difficult for us to justify why we should give half a million to you guys. Based on the answer that you gave just now, there are a certain requirements. May I know the requirements? Like what do I need to have in order to apply for both of these grants? Alright, so for CIP part, it's very simple. For individuals, meaning that you have you and your co-founders, right? Mm -hmm. But you don't have a senior heart yet. So you can just straight apply as long as you are cukup umur. Okay. You, you, you are this Malaysian citizen. Or even if you are non Malaysia, but you reside in Malaysia, you could do that as well, right? Alright, okay. Okay, that's for individual. But for other companies like uh, PLT, Enterprise, Senior Bahad, there are a few things that we are looking for. Well, the first one is you need to be less than five years old. Doesn't uh, not, mean not not the age of the founder to be less than five years old, Age of incorporation, right? last. Okay, when was yes. the last incorporation? So in this Just part, making sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but to be uh, to be frank with you all, hmm. what we're going to do is that for the five years incorporation, even if you are like four years, eleven months, and thirty nine days, right, we're still okay. going to accept. Even on the five years on the dot. But we're not going to accept five years and one days. Oh, so that that it's, specific, it's, it's yeah. very strict in a way, lah. Yeah, and also this is not negotiable. So don't don't email me and ask, uh, why cannot I be accepted just one day? Uh, Memang it's like, not like, negotiable. Like you mentioned before, right? You don't entertain people who email, right? Yep. You guys only entertain those who apply through the website. Correct. Yeah, sure, yeah. Sure. So no emails, okay? <laughs> okay. After that is like about the revenue, right? Okay. I mean, of course. Some of them might not have the revenue. Some of them might have. For CIP Spark, we're looking at someone who have less than three million revenue. Okay. So it's fine if you have the revenue. Three million ringgit. Three million. Three million US ringgit, dollars. not US dollars. Ringgit okay. Malaysia. So we are talking in ringgit in this video. The whole video we are talking in ringgit. Correct. All right. So another thing that we have is basically the percentage of shareholding of your company. So okay. this is like if you already receive funding from other firm previously, right? You can, but we need to make sure that it's less than 35%. The reason being is that we don't want to fund someone that have no say in their company. Sure, makes sense. Right, so basically just imagine like this, this is uh, the situation, right? Where you apply for Zappi Spark, you already got the approval, but then you want to do something and you want to use the fund, but then your other shareholder was like, oh, you cannot because of some reasons. Okay. But then if you don't have the financing, then why should we fund you then? So, so, so you want the founder to have most percentage of his Correct. company. So that's why we set the eligibility criteria to be you know other companies okay. for 35% or more. All right. That's the basis. Lah. So the next after that is basically for non-Malaysian. I am a Malaysian give, by to the give, way. To give, to give you like uh, some not known facts lah, apparently. Right. Non-Malaysian can apply for grant. Uh, you can as long as you reside in Malaysia. If you want to set up a company here, you can set up as a senior Bahad. But for those uh, for non Malaysian, right, who have like less than fifty one percent, it's fine. Even if like it's one hundred percent foreign owned, sure. uh, we're looking into the number of employees. Okay. So it needs to be majority of Malaysian employees, lah. So Excellent. the last one would be in terms of the paid up capital. You don't have to have any. It can be as little as one hundred ringgit. So basically, that's all for the eligibility criteria. Okay. So let's say, okay, I am a startup founder now, mm -hmm. uh, and I ticked all the boxes that you mentioned just now. So mm -hmm. I I meet all the requirements. Talk to me about the process. What do I do first, and then followed by what? Followed by what? All right. So the whole entire process, right, for grant uh, application doesn't mean that you met all the eligibility criteria you're going to be deserving that grant sure. right you gonna have to go for the screening first and then you after you pass the screening test not test lah i would say the screening phase all right then we will invite you for a pitch shark tank, shark tank kind of pitch all right. and then we're going to grill you from the get-go any tips on how startup founders can create a very appealing deck to, okay. to you guys or the investors. Like how do we win your hearts in order to get the funding? 
Alright, so basically it's simple. Uh, I wouldn't say it's simple, but before you submit your application, you have to send us the pitch, right? And we have the format already. But in terms of the format, you have to follow the structure of it. But your creativity is you are you are free to come up with your own creativity. That aside, there are a few things that I will always look for. The first one is the problem itself. So your problem, you have to be very. It is to be very major. For example, something like if you want to address the underserved and underbanked people, right? Mm -hmm. So you want to show this severity of the problem. So it's either you come up the statistics, it have to be come up from case studies, what you experience. Mm -hmm. Then we can relate. Okay, oh, this is the problem. Having that. Then comes the solution. So solution is how you're going to address that, right? For example, take a look about GX Bank, the digital bank, right? So the pain point that they have is basically banking process can be quite uh, menyusahkan, right? Bothersome, yeah. right? Where you have to go through the branch, you have to sign a few forms, and then you get back, and then suddenly, hey, uh, you might have missed out on one form, then you have to go back. So what GX Bank is proposing, what's their value proposition is that opening up the account. Or saving up the money itself that you have, the savings is as simple as you download our app, you register, do EKYC, and then put it in the bank itself. So you see, the solution is addressing the pain points, and also on your part, you need to show us why your solution is sexy. It, yeah. Okay, one is need to be different, and another one is it needs to be interesting, lah. If you just copy another grab food, or you just copy another Shopee, and then try, what's... try to be different from the existing market. Like, yeah, like you, you because you want to be different, right? Yeah. You if you come up with another Shopee, then how are you going to fight with the giants? You're oh. not. This is not David versus Goliath, right? Yeah, good point there. Once you already have the solutions problems, right? The next key thing that you need to have is you need to have your own technology. Since CIP Spark is all about developing a new startup, right? If you don't have the tech, then what makes you any different compared to others? Hence, this is really important and this is one of the key things or elements that we're looking into. You need to have the tech and you need to own the tech. For example, something like, okay, you in health tech, right? You came up with something to do the screening and you somehow have the new tech to ease the process of screening. So this kind of process or the technology that you have, you need to pattern and then you can apply. This one is exclusive for you. Then that's how you position yourself above beyond the rest, right? So even if you don't have the patented items yet, no worries. You just have to let us know that this tech actually belongs to you. Like I own that technology. Yes, and also no other people can uh, copy. Oh, that's great. Even if they try to copy, it wouldn't be as exact, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. For example, like source code, yeah, you need to show those lah. As in like, just have to convince us that this is belongs to you. Another thing about the LGBT criteria that we have is that you need to have your own IP. Because if you don't have your own IP, it will be tricky. Like, anyone can just use your product and come up with a new other startup, right? So this is a way for you to protect your oh, sure, sure. your key pro value proposition and also to give us a peace of mind that we funded the right startup. Lah. Okay, lah. so basically having an IP is like a great wall to protect people from copying your things. Right? Yes, so yeah, but then for CIP Spark, some people might have not have the financial... The uh, facilities. The facilities and also, you know, they might not know how to pattern the file IP. Right, it's sure. fine. But when you came to us, you need to have your own strategy that, okay, this is how I'm going to position ourselves that this mm. belongs to us. Mm. And then also at the end of the CIP spark, we're going to use the funding as well to file for the IP. Mm.